Good day, everyone. My name is Pastor Ekechu Tiedum, and I'm your host at Everyday Prayer Television. Today, we shall be looking at how to conquer evil forces. How to conquer evil forces. Now, the, when we talk about evil forces in this video, we're talking about forces of resistance, the gates of hell that tries to stop you from getting to your promised land. Those invisible forces that resist your miracles, that resist your progress, that resist your healing. Praise the Lord. These are the forces we are talking about. And these forces can manifest themselves in two ways. Either as uh, uh, spiritual or sin forces, or as human agents, demonic human agents that have been set to resist you. Like in the case of Haman in the days of Esther. Praise the Lord. Now, as you follow the steps I'm going to be sharing in this video, you will conquer evil as a lifestyle. In the mighty name of Jesus, as you follow the steps that I'm going to be sharing with you in this video, you will conquer evil on a daily basis in the mighty name of Jesus. I encourage you to watch this video with all your heart and watch it till the end. And you will live a life of a more than a conqueror Christian in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, how to conquer evil as a Christian? If you're a child of God watching me right now and your life has been mesmerized by evil forces, I mean, everything you do, they scatter it. You are trying to gather their scattering. Whenever you want to get success, bad luck happens. You always experience near success syndrome. You always experience failure at the point of breakthrough. You always experience unnecessary delays, demonic delays, setbacks, disappointment, shame, and pain. In your marriage, it is in shambles because forces of evil have infested them. Now, if you are in this category today, as I, 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 I congratulate you ahead of time because your time of breakthrough has come. As I share these things with you and as you begin to put them to work, your deliverance will show up with speed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, how do I conquer evil forces? Number one, spiritual boldness. Spiritual boldness. As a child of God, number one thing that you must have is the spirit of boldness. When the Holy Ghost fills your heart, the first thing that manifests is boldness. The Bible said when David was anointed, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. The first manifestation of David was to confront Goliath, the spirit of boldness. The spirit of boldness. When Jesus was baptized, he was led by the Holy Spirit to the wilderness to fast for 40 days. The moment he was through with his fasting and prayer, the first thing he manifested was boldness in ministering the gospel and in casting out devils. Praise the Lord. The spirit of boldness is the first step to conquering evil. The, uh, the ability to look at the devil in the eyes and confront the devil. The ability to dare forces of darkness and tell them where, put them where they belong. You need the spirit of boldness. In Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1, the Bible said, The wicked pursue it when no man, the wicked run it when no man pursue it. But the righteous are as bold as a lion. The righteous are as bold as a lion. When Daniel was to be thrown into the lion's den, he was bold. He was not shaken. He didn't lie. He said, I pray, and if I'm going to be thrown into the lion's den, so be it. He entered there with a spirit of boldness, and the lion saw him, and they were mute. When the three Hebrew boys, Shepherd, Bishan, and Abadibu, were confronted by King Nebuchadnezzar, they said, Oh, King, we are not, we are not careful to answer you this matter. The Lord will serve, is going to deliver us, but if he does not, we are ready to die. In this fire, boldness. And when they entered the fire, because of the spirit of boldness, the fire could not burn them. When Moses, when Moses encountered God at the burning bush, he received the spirit of boldness and he confronted Pharaoh. The same Pharaoh he was running away from, he confronted them. In Acts chapter 2, the disciples, when Jesus died, they all fled. They were hiding in the upper room. But when the Holy Spirit came upon them, they received the spirit of boldness and they came up publicly and began to minister and do signs and wonders. So, the first step to conquering evil forces, evil resistances, satanic resistances, is through the spirit of boldness. The spirit of boldness. Now, receive that impartation of the spirit of boldness right now. In the name of Jesus, place your hand on your head as I prophesy again. I said, receive the impartation of the spirit of boldness now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number two, prayer. And fasting prayer and fasting be a praying and fasting Christian 
Be a praying and fasting Christian. As a child of God, devote certain days of the month for fasting and prayer. You don't need to fast and pray when you need something from God. You know, a lot of Christians only fast and pray when they need an urgent miracle from God. Oh, you need deliverance in your marriage. You need to get married. You need to get a job. You need to get children. That is when you fast and pray. No, make a routine. Have a fasting and praying routine in your life. Why do you need to fast and pray? Is to be on charge spiritually. When you have a routine, a monthly fasting and praying routine, you are always charged in the spirit realm. You are always charged in the spirit realm. Now, in Matthew chapter 17, Jesus' disciples were confronted with a spiritual problem. A, a child that was possessed. And they prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing happened. They followed, they prayed the same prayer. Jesus was praying, nothing happened. But when Jesus came, he spoke a word and the demon left. And they asked him, how did you do it? Now, he told them that if you have faith, you can do anything. He said, but this kind goeth not, but with prayer and fasting. He says, listen to me, it is not that you could not cast out the devil. It's because you, you don't have enough charge in you. You have not generated enough power to cast out this particular devil. You have not generated enough spiritual capacity to cast out this particular devil. So you need a fasting and praying routine to keep your spiritual power charged. Praise the Lord. Fasting and praying is just like charging your phone. If you have a phone, you know, you need to always charge it weekly or monthly, depending on how your phone capacity is, to maintain the, the, the working levels of the phone. So that is how it is. As a Christian, you have to have a fasting and praying routine. It could be once every month. It could be twice every month. It could be four times in a month. According to your level, have a fasting and praying routine to keep you charged spiritually. So that when you confront evil, evil bounds. Hallelujah. I see God giving you the grace to wait on him in prayer and fasting monthly in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number three, spiritual sensitivity. You have to be spiritually sensitive to evil. The Bible said, be sober, be vigilant, because your enemy, the devil, goes about like a worry lion seeking for him to devour. That's First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Brother, he said you must resist him. You have to be spiritually sensitive. In Matthew 26, 41, the Bible said, watch and pray. Be sensitive. Don't just pray without watching. If you are spiritually sensitive, listen to me. Many Christians pray, but they don't watch. After they finish praying, they still go and expose themselves to the enemy. They don't listen to the voice of the Spirit. They are not sensitive. Not everybody around you is your friend. It's not everybody around you that you must talk 10 things about you. It's not everybody around you that you must expose yourself to. You have to be spiritually sensitive. You have to be vigilant. You have to be vigilant. You have to know when to go spiritual on issues. You have to know. When somebody is sitting on your promotion, you think it's a physical war. It is not. You have to go spiritual. You have to be spiritually sensitive to smell evil from afar. You have to be spiritually sensitive. Listen to me. If there's anything you must pray for, it is the spirit of discernment. Because there are many wolves in sheep clothes. Not every man of God is a man of God. Praise the Lord. Not every man of God is a man of God. I'm not talking about, I'm not trying to say there are man of, men of God that are perfect. We are all saved by grace. Every man of God, you know, is a product of grace. But I'm telling you, not every man of God is a man. Some of them are vicious wolves. Some of them are vicious wolves. Some people that come around you, you think that they are well meaning people, they are vicious wolves. A lot of women have run into wrong marriages because they were not sensitive. A lot of women have married devils because they are, they are not sensitive. They are spiritually blind. Yes, they are praying, but the spiritual sensitivity is not there. They are praying, but they are not watching. They are praying, but they are not watching. When you pray and don't watch, you can still fall into temptation. When you pray and don't watch, you can still fall into the trap of the enemy. When you pray and you are not sensitive, Satan can still infiltrate your calm. Spiritual sensitivity. Judas was one of the disciples. The only Jesus knew 
The rest of them were not sensitive. They didn't know that Judas among them was, a, was an enemy. They don't know. Spiritual sensitivity will open your eyes to the enemy within. It will open your eyes to those who are backbiting and sabotaging your efforts from behind. The spirit of sensitivity will open your eyes to the Ahitophels of your life. Now listen to me. Place your hand on your head. Receive spiritual sensitivity now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Receive spiritual sensitivity now. In the mighty name of Jesus. For today, no Satan will sneak into your camp unawares. You will know in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive the spiritual sensitivity now. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The next way to conquer evil is to engage in the ministry of angels. Child of God, angels are real. The day God opened my eyes to see my angel, it was a fierce-looking creature. A fierce-looking creature, sir. Angels are real. Psalm 104 verse 4. He said, are they not ministering angels sent to deliver those? That's right. And he said, he make his angels flames of fire. In Psalm 104 verse 4. He make his angels flames of fire. And in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14, he said, are they not ministering spirits sent to minister to those who are going to be heirs of salvation? Angels are real. Listen to me. Every time you pray, angels go to action. Learn to walk with angels. Release your angels. Listen to me. If they are holding your promotion, release your angels to get that promotion for you. If they are holding your husband, if a demonic strange man has used spells to draw your husband away from you, release your angels. Release your angels. Angels are real. Angels, you can send your angels to your foundation to destroy every power that is holding you. You can release angels to destroy evil authors. You can release angels to pursue those that are pursuing you. Attack those that are attacking you. Angels are real and their mission is to protect you. They are your spiritual bodyguards. I don't know how to emphasize this long enough. Your angels are your spiritual bodyguards. They will protect you spiritually and physically. When you, are, when you are conscious of angelic activities, you cannot be involved in an accident. You cannot be killed unnecessarily. The, 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 the enemy, you can never be in the wrong place at the wrong time when you know how to activate your angels. Listen to me. Your angels can do anything for you on the altar of prayer. They can attack your enemy. They can fight your battles. They can get back what the enemy has stolen from you. They can go to war for you. They can go to war for you. Listen to me. You may not see your angels, but when you begin to use them on the altar of prayer, you begin to see their manifestation. You begin to see their manifestation. Engage the ministry of angels. Somebody is threatening, threatening you. Engage the ministry of angels. Release angels of war. Let your angels go and attack. When Balaam was coming to curse the children of Israel, there was an angel that stood before him to kill him. It was the donkey that saved him. In Acts chapter 12, when Peter was arrested, after James was beheaded, Herod arrested Peter to kill him the next day. It was an angel that responded to the prayers of the apostles that killed Herod. He delivered Peter and killed Herod. In the days of Hezekiah, when Hezekiah was threatened by King Sennacherib of Assyria, it was an angel when Hezekiah went into the sanctuary and opened the letters to God and called on the God of heaven. It was an angel that was sent to kill 186,000 soldiers overnight. When all the firstborn of Israel was to be killed, it was an angel, one angel, that killed all firstborn, both man and beast, and even punished the gods of the Egyptians. Engage your angels. Your angels are ever ready to respond. They are ministry spirits. You don't see them, but their acts are real. Their results are real. So engage the ministry of angels to conquer evil resistances. From today, your angels will start fighting your battles. In the mighty name of God. From today, your angels, the host of heaven, will start fighting your battles. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Next is be a student of the world. Be a student of the world. Be a student of the world. Colossians chapter 3, 16. He said, let the word of Christ dwell richly you. Study the world. What the word of God does is that it opens your eyes to see your authority. The word of God shows you your authority. The word of God tells you who you are. Learn to study the word of God on a daily basis. Learn to read the word of God. Every phone has a Bible in it. You can download free Bibles on Play Store. Learn to read the word. 
Let your prayers be backed up by scriptures. Let your prayers be backed up by scriptures. The word is what powers your prayers. The word is what powers your prayers. Be a student of the word. If you don't know the word, you can be victims of false prophets. I'm telling you, if you do not know the word, you can be victims of false prophets. And look at the sad story that happened in Africa recently of a woman that was caught by the husband sleeping with a man of a supposedly man of God, a, a so-called man of God. Now, in the name of performing a ritual for pregnancy, and she was heavily pregnant. Now they say whether she was doing it to, to, to perfect the pregnancy, I don't know, but she was trying to sleep with a man of God. Now, if that lady was privileged to understand scriptures, she would not have been the victim that she ended up becoming. When you don't know the word of God, you can be a victim of vicious wolves in sheep clothing. You can be a victim of demonic prophets in the synagogue of Satan. Are you hearing me? When you don't know the word, they can deceive you. Take your money, take your dignity, take everything from you. But listen to me, from today, the word of God will wear richly in you. I release the arch by the Holy Ghost to keep studying the word of God from today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So be a student of the word. Number six, never give up on God. Never give up on God. Hebrews 6, 12. He said, follow them who through faith and patience. Follow them who through faith and patience obtain the promise. Now listen to me. In our walk with God, we must never give up on God. Don't judge God with your own timing. That you are praying and it seems as if the storm is not moving. It seems as if the resistance is still there. It seems as if Satan is still having an upper hand in your life. Child of God, never give up. Stand with God because the storm will surely pass. Stand with God because that evil will surely pass. Stand with God because that heron will surely go down. It will surely go down. It will surely go down. There is an expiring day for every enemy of God. There is an expiring day for every enemy of God. You must have spiritual tenacity, spiritual persistence. You must learn to wait on the Lord. A lot of Christians lack patience. They have faith, but they don't have patience. And because they don't have patience, their faith dies on the way. You must add patience to your faith. You must follow them who through faith and patience, long suffering. You must be willing to wait on the Lord until your change comes. You must be willing to stand with Jesus. You must be willing to be ruggedly patient. Beginning, you must begin, you must be willing to stand. You must be willing to stand. Never give up on God. God will never give up on you. Listen, God never gives up on his children. He said, though it tarries, Habakkuk 2, 2, he said, though it tarries, he said, wait for it, for it shall come to pass, and it will not tarry. That it seems as if God is not hearing your prayers does not mean he's not hearing your prayers. Keep praying, keep watching, keep declaring, keep standing, keep waiting, and your change will come. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your change will come in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Receive the spirit of patience in the mighty name of Jesus. Listen to me. You will not wait forever. You will not wait forever. God will come at the right time to manifest himself to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Your time is now. Hallelujah. Number seven, be cheerful. Philippians 4.4. He it said, rejoice always. Again, I say rejoice. Never let your problems reflect in your face. No matter the matter, never give the devil the satisfaction of depression. Be cheerful in everything. Give thanks. Be rejoice always. Philippians 4, 4 says rejoice always. Whether things are working well, rejoice. Whether things don't seem to be working well, rejoice. He says, rejoice always. Always. Even when you don't understand what is going on. Even when you don't understand the stress. Even when you cannot tell what is happening. Things are just not going your way. Learn to rejoice in the Lord because God is still in charge. 
Look at what happened to Joseph. All the calamities in his life, God was still in charge. God was still in charge. Jesus was in the boat and there was a storm. A great storm. Jesus was still in charge. Listen to me. The road to your promised land is the wilderness. It is the wilderness. So, with, whether you are in the wilderness of your life, it doesn't matter right now. Rejoice! Because your change will come. Your change will come. At the end of that wilderness is your promised land. Now, hear me, child of God. I don't know whether evil is winning in your life right now. I don't know how long evil have been winning in your life. But listen to me, child of God, your change has come. In the mighty name of Jesus, your change has come. Every power from the pit of hell that has vowed that you will not see the light of day, that you will not see prosperity, that you will not share that testimony, all their evil plans will backfire by fire on their heads. In the mighty name of Jesus, all their evil plans, all their evil strategies will backfire by fire on their heads. In the mighty name of of Jesus Christ. Amen. I encourage you, follow these seven steps. Steps. In no particular order. They are not, it will be found that like name, not, not by one to seven does not mean it's step by step. Just follow them. Let the Holy Ghost help you flow with them. Let the Holy Ghost give you spiritual boldness, which I know you have received already. Be a praying and fasting Christian. Engage the ministry of angels. Be a student of the world. Never give up on God and be cheerful. Be what? Be cheerful. Have spiritual sensitivity. Praise the Lord. I encourage you to watch these videos again and again until this world becomes a seed that will germinate in your life. Praise the Lord. And I encourage you to take advantage of our numerous prayers in this channel, many prayers in this channel that will help your prayer life. In this channel, we teach you how to pray. We don't pray for you. We teach you how to be on fire for God. So take advantage of our prayers and it will bless you a great deal in the mighty name of Jesus. And if you are not yet subscribed, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification button, and you'll be glad to be. And as you subscribe today, I see God doing great works in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. Evil will never conquer you forever. In the mighty name of Jesus. My name is Silver Pastor Ketu Chilebu, your host at Everyday Prayer Television. Remember, blessed. Stay safe. In Jesus' great name. Amen. God bless you.